<laughs> Hi, everyone. It's Madge Weinstein, and I'm here with my delicious co-host, Fashion Sluri, and we are on Ha'awahur. Did I pronounce it right? Very good. I don't even yeah. know how to pronounce our own show. And I will let uh, Fashion Sluri introduce our most uh, climactic guest of all. The, the, uh, the, 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 I don't even know what to say. You do it, please. It's just... I'm in well, order. this uh, is definitely a special moment because not only uh, was she on the first ever Drag Race Holland, she also won Drag Yay! Race Holland. It's <laughs> Miss Envy Peru. Welcome, Hello, Envy. Hello, our Huda. How are you doing? <laughs> we are fantastic. Really and you look gorgeous. My goodness. Yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. Amazing. <laughs> How does it feel to be the queen? You're the queen. You're the queen of I'm Holland. I'm the queen. I'm the first Dutch drag superstar. Uh, now I'm, ve I'm very proud to represent Holland as their first winner. And uh, I'm also very proud, of course, to be the first Latin American queen to win the title. So it, that makes it oh, yes. special. And I would, I would argue a little bit because I think you've always, you've been the biggest Dutch superstar, drag superstar for quite a while. It appears you have been the certainly the most popular for some time, right? I've been, I've been, uh, yeah, working a lot <laughs> in the yeah. scene and on, on on television and TV. So um, yes, I, I, yeah, before Drag Race, yeah, most of the people in the scene uh, knew who Envy Peru was. Yes. Yeah. And I will say I've been on Team Envy since the beginning, not only because as soon as I saw those those promo shots, I knew it was you. And my girlfriend is Peruvian. It's Peruvian, I know, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, I talk about it all the time, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited. It was exciting for both of us. And when you won, we were just so uh, at the edge of our seats, so excited. Like, please say Envy. We love Janie, too, but, you know, mm -hmm. come on. We're so happy. And then you said, que viva Peru, que viva Peru, carajo. And I kept yes. asking my girlfriend, I said, what does that mean? She said, you have to ask Envy. I can't explain it. So can you tell us what that means? <laughs> it's a uh, long live Peru, damn it. <laughs> oh, damn <laughs> Something it. like that. Nice. It, yeah. Carajo is like, uh, it's, it's actually a swear word. It's a, it's a bad word. But um, for, for example, when uh, Peru is doing football games or Peru is doing something in the Olympics and they won, they're always like, the people go with the beer outside and they like, viva Peru, carajo! Uh -huh. And it's actually, uh -huh. it's like a victory, uh, like long live Peru. Very nice. And yes. so have you, have you heard a lot from Peruvians about you? Uh, have have oh. you done any interviews from Peruvian t TV? Or? Oh, yeah. I, uh, the Peruvian Paris has been going crazy. Most of my family, they live in Peru. And they wake up the next morning and see me on television, on the morning news and all the newspapers. So, uh, wow. yeah, yeah, the, the Peruvian press has, uh, pay, has been paying a lot of attention to, uh, to me participating on the show, but also me winning the title. Uh, so that's very cool. And today as well, I've got two uh, interviews as well with the Peruvian press, uh, very big ones. So uh, wow. I'm very excited for that. Yeah. So what, what sort of uh, influences do you have from Peru? Like, I know I've listened a lot to, to Ima Sumac, and do you know about Coco Mara Six? I've heard a lot about her. What, what are your influences from Peru? My, in my drag, you mean? Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, in, general. in general. Well, first of all, I, I love my culture, you know. Mm -hmm. um, even though I moved um, from Peru away to Holland when I was four, four and a half years, my mom always uh, teached me to appreciate our culture, never forget um, uh, our culture and to be very proud of it. So even though um, I've lived for a long time in Holland, basically all my life, I always had a, a big pride of being Peruvian. And I want people from Peru to feel proud to be Peruvian as well. So that's mm -hmm. why I dedicated also my drag name, um, yeah, MV Peru. So, yeah. Um, as a tribute as well to my roots. So, um, right. of course, in the show, we had like the family resemblance, for example. Sure. And that was like the perfect moment to pay tribute to my roots in a very obvious way. Yeah, that and was it fantastic. was so cute. And yeah. I love how you're... Because in the beginning of the show, I think you mentioned how the relationship with your mom kind of, when you came out of the closet, was a little more tense than, well, apparently when she came on... <laughs> Uh, next, uh, oh, next step model. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you could be, you could be, but, uh, but when she came on the show and uh, it was so 
amazing to see the love and uh, the connection that, uh, well, beamed out of my TV screen. Yeah, my mom is a beam of light, beam of love. And of course, it started differently. You know, when I came out of the closet, I came out in a... Um, not the, the not the best timing, but yeah, when is the good timing as, as well to to come out of the closet? There's not a good timing, but we will like meet in an argument and um, <laughs> yeah, and she she said something about gay people, and I said, but I'm gay too, and <laughs> my mom looked at me with his big eyes like, ¿Qué? Tú, Marika? <laughs> <laughs> so she was yeah, she got so angry and so not, not yeah, angry, but she, more disappointed. What uh, does Marika because, mean? Marika is like faggot. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, um, but it, it was a tense. We, we had a little uh, argument. So at that point, um, yeah, I I, um, I called a friend of mine, uh, which is a trans uh, a trans woman from uh, from Hilversum, Kelly, and oh, Kelly, Kelly from the Fear. Yeah, she was yeah. always like mother mothering over me when I was younger. Uh, the most. In Holland, people know Kelly van der Verf to being the first transgender um, person to get famous in Big Brother. And uh, she lived also... Wasn't yeah, she, she always also on uh, uh, the Travesty Show, though? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. She got famous for the Travesty Show and then later and then nationally did, yeah. uh, bigger in Big Brother. Yeah. Um, but she was like the only queer person I knew back then. So uh, she took care of me. She picked me up in the car. I stayed like for two weeks at our home. And after two weeks, I returned and talked to my mom when everything got a little bit more chill. And that's why I explained all the kind of different people that, yeah, that exist in our community, trans people, gay people, lesbian people. And then slowly she started to understand because in Peru, it's like taboo and you don't mm -hmm. talk about queerness. It's like non-existent. You know, um, but it came very close to her that her son um, yeah, is, is gay. So that's why she got really um, um, sad because she always pictured the life of me with um, with a woman and having kids. And she uh, um, will yeah, be a grandmother. It still can happen, though, but different. Sure. But um, she saw like the perfect picture, like crumble away. You want to have kids? Um well, at this moment in my life, it's, yeah, well, I'm now focused so much on my career, but who knows? I would love to have kids, actually, uh, maybe later in life. But let's see, you know, um, it will come or not. It, it really depends on how my life will evolve as an entertainer. As well, I'm kid. sure you can have your clothing adapted for maternity, you know. And <laughs> Mom, we can help you. Mom. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, right? <laughs> Oh, that's great. So have you been back? You're from Trujillo, right? Trujillo, Trujillo? see. Trujillo. Yes. Have you been back there since? Uh, I mean, obviously, I don't remember since you were a little kid. Because you did uh, go back to Peru, I think, to do to and you saw some shows, right? Yeah, recent. Uh, the, the last I was in Peru in February till beginning of March. Uh -huh. So before the lockdown and the COVID happened, I was with my boyfriend for three weeks in Peru. So we went to Lima. We uh -huh. went to Cusco. We went to Piura. Um, uh -huh. In Lima, I have a lot of my family uh, there, and uh, of course, I want to see meet the drag queens over there and see how the scene is over there. So I got invited for some clubs uh, as an appearance, and um, uh -huh. it was so cool because some of my aunties and my uncles joined uh, joined me as well in the gay clubs. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, nice! Be part of it, yeah. So I got a very supportive family now. That's that's very. And what's the big difference between the Peruvian uh, drag scene and the Dutch? Um, the difference between Peruvian, uh, the drag scene and the Dutch one um, uh, or the European one, um, the Peruvians are really dancing divas. They oh. can, wow, they, you know, uh, of like the level of Shangela and Kennedy Davenport mm -hmm. kind of uh, uh, dance and uh, performance. That, well, that's exactly Peru. A lot of Latin influence, a lot of dancing. Um, and, and yeah, in and, and, and Holland or European, is it is the... Um, it's more fashion, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, um, and we got a bit, yeah. <laughs> Clombadance? What's that? Clogging? Clogging? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it makes sense because Latin, well, the, the Latin culture is known for their beautiful dancing. And so it makes sense that dancing is bigger there than obviously yes. in the Netherlands where. And they got productions as well as in the clubs with dancers, like choreos when I was mm -hmm. there. Like two of the biggest queens there in Peru, Tani de la Riva and Georgia Hart, um, 
were doing the the Super Bowl halftime show from Shakira and Jennifer Lopez. Oh my god! But <laughs> full on choreo with set with dancers, everything. I was like, oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm not going to perform here. I'm just going to watch the show. <laughs> I cannot do that. I can, I'm not the split queen or whatever. You know, I can perform, but I can I cannot do that. <laughs> right. Well, I imagine you. They were be- amazing excited about going back to peru after this lockdown so you can oh yeah really just have a they'll probably have a parade for you oh my god it's amazing but there's a lot of uh political stuff i think they just had a coup there didn't they yeah yeah the, poli- yeah. the political stuff um the situation in peru is mo- at this moment very tense with of course yeah. the president um um yeah how do you say it um afgezet uh, um, impeached uh, well yeah that the, the, they is um impeached? it's i don't know no, no, impeached is more that they're charging him with stuff. Yeah, they're he's charging with stuff. Cut off and of uh, raining. Yeah, so there's a lot of riots going on at the moment uh, because people don't agree with the new president there. Yeah, is going to take his job. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of corruption going on, apparently, and the situation is very tense. So I, I have a lot of Peruvian uh, friends that I follow, and I can really see that. Yeah. It's it's oh, it's ugly. Yeah, I have I have family down there too, and they're having a, a very hard time. Yeah, because the lockdown has really affected people quite a bit because they don't have yeah. a lot of uh, protections. Um, so I was really interested. You know, I've noticed through your through your season, I guess, that you really are a performer, and then you know you really know how to act is what my my sense was. So I watched an interview with you the other day. I can't remember the name of the person who did it, but and you said that you actually studied acting, and then everything made sense to me at that point because I knew I knew I figured something she has something. you really seem to have a performance skill like I you you know how to act. Every time you went on screen, you really control your facial expressions and you have such a strong sense of humor in your acting. So were you originally intending to be an act an actor and then drag was sort of an accident or how did that happen? Well yeah I, yeah it, it happened like that actually because I'm I always I always was well, in love with uh, with performing arts since since I was little, mm-hmm. I've been o- always been drawing. Um, my mom remembers me from from my childhood to um, I was always drawing, drawing Pokemon, draw, drawing Dragon Ball mm-hmm. C characters, draw, drawing very strong women, um, women with big lips and big boobies, and you know I was obsessed mm-hmm. with strong women like Cena Warrior Princess. I was obsessed with her, and. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it shows with all your uh 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 <laughs> boobies <laughs> no not with the boobies with the the damn my, my brain is fried uh never mind go on <laughs> <laughs> yeah i always I, i'm always intrigued with goddesses with str- mm-hmm. strong women and that's what you see most in my drag as well um and um so later when i um i got uh of high school um i i needed to choose okay which direction i'm gonna go and I thought, okay, I got my half of diploma. Um, I'm really going to do something that I like. And my mm. mom really supported that. And I really wanted to go to acting school because I was doing uh, acting like in, in little theater groups when I was uh, younger. Mm-hmm. And so I, I figured out, okay, I want to make my profession out of it. So when I started doing acting, um, I, I uh, graduated as well after the four years. But after my graduation, I was like, hmm, is this really the thing that I... I'm looking for something more, but I can I could not think of what it's what I what I was looking for. So uh, I love the acting uh, and I love to act, but it was very hard for me to get um, acting jobs as a Latin uh, boy mm-hmm. in Holland because there was not a lot of Latin representation. So every time I would go to an audition and I get very close, and then it, yeah, it it was. I needed to do something else uh, because mm-hmm. I was working in a shitty call center job and that was making me so unhappy. Yeah. So uh, that's why I decided, okay, I'm just going to embrace every queerness that I have. And uh, because I, w- I-, I started to do makeup uh, after that, um, but I never had the balls to do makeup before because I thought that was too gay and too feminine. Um, and that's where my inner homophobia uh, was like mm-hmm. messing with me. But when I came to Amsterdam, I fully, like, I fully accepted my queerness and said, I'm going to do the makeup. And apparently I was very good at it because I've been drawing, like, since a little kid. Um, So now with drag, I combine both things together, like the acting and the makeup. So how did you make the leap from makeup to drag? Well, I was working. 
I was working in a makeup counter in Amsterdam mm -hmm. and at Mac Cosmetics, and Mac Cosmetics really opened up my eyes of the queer scene in Holland and in Amsterdam. Um, I got to work with uh, drag queens, but trans people, lesbian people, gay people. It was so queer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I started to fall in love with the community. So they, oh, they took me to drag shows, they took me to the gay bars, and then I saw oh, actually, I want to be part of this community. I want to be part of this scene because it's so beautiful and colorful and everybody's like themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, so my one of my drag moms, Tabita, is very known in Amsterdam. Um, she asked me uh, if I would like to do a show in Amsterdam 54. And this was back in 2016. And I said, no, no, I don't want to do that because <laughs> I, I'm afraid to do that because she has been seeing pictures of me uh, playing with makeup and doing drag for the past three years, but only on Halloween. But she, lo she <laughs> loved how I looked. <laughs> so that's why she wanted to book me on, uh, on, this, uh, on this drag night. And then eventually I said, okay, let's do it, but I need to come with a name. And so, because back then I was still called Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a very slutty name. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Wow. laughs> so um, th that's how Envy Peru started. Wow! wow. Yeah. So that's only four years ago. Uh, yeah, 2016. So that's yeah, almost four. No, it's yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah, four years. Four years. Yeah. So where did you live before uh, Amsterdam then? In Hilversum. Oh, uh -huh. well, yeah, m might be a little more conservative as yeah, Amsterdam, it is. but yeah, but it's it still is. a city, so. And a it's a little, city. yeah. Well, it's it's uh it's different living there because of course all the television shows and mm -hmm. studios are in Hilversum, so it's um a lot of creative things happen there. But uh, on high school, it's very white. Uh, uh, yeah. I was like yeah, I was like the only Latin kid in my high school, so uh, there were not wow. a lot of a lot of uh, colored people or even gay people. <laughs> Is that um, where they filmed Drag Race in Hilversum, right? No, in Utrecht. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. did they film in Utrecht? Oh. In Utrecht, yes. Oh, okay. very nice. So, where's the Jurk? Where's <laughs> the Jurk? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, uh, I've uh, let me think, uh, last uh, Sunday, I've done my Cosmopolitan shoot. Uh -huh. so, oh, finally. Uh, Yes, I already went to Clay's Everson to do a fitting if the, if the, if the dress um, needs some adjustment. So they did that. And on the Cosmopolitan shoot was the first time I really had it on. And mm -hmm. the, the picture is going to look so gorgeous and so amazing. Um, but I still Is that the December issue then? Or the January? Be, no, December issue. Oh, yay. That's fast. Yes. Yeah, that's very <laughs> fast. So um, we're going to have a little cute moment also with Clay's Everson and his, and, uh, his assistant to uh to make a thing out of it to really hand over the dress to me um, very nice this atelier so oh, i saw patty wearing it already <laughs> she made her own <laughs> yeah the yeah. cheap version <laughs> yeah. uh, that's that's fantastic so, <laughs> so, I, Patty, so funny. a lot of people knew from the mm -hmm. beginning that you would win yeah. did you cool. did you know well actually I was even hesitating yeah. to uh, to compete on the show because f for my feeling, there was a lot of at stake. You know, I've been mm, doing oh. a lot of things as mm. well uh, in Holland and I, I've had my TV show with two other drag queens. I've worked with Nikki Tutorials, you know. So I was really afraid to go into the Dutch drag race. And at first I thought, oh, it's just going to be... Um, a drag race only on video land and only for the Dutch people. But we just figured out a week before filming that it's going to oh, be wow. broadcasted in 280 countries. Mm -hmm. So that changed everything. Um, so, yeah, no, uh, I know that uh, there are so many amazing queens in Holland. Uh, so I never, of course, you want to win. And that was my goal. And I came into with a with a with a goal and to um, to show people indeed, like I said at, at the end, that I'm more than a pretty picture and a social media queen, but mm. that I actually can do more than that. And um, I'm very happy I achieved that. That's, that's what pleasantly surprised me because a lot of the times on uh, uh, Drag Race, the, the really fishy, pretty, stunning queens either can't act or aren't funny or whatever. And uh, from one of the first challenges, was it the fitness challenge or whatever? Yeah. You really made me laugh, and I was like, "Ah, oh, yes! It's not just <laughs> beauty." 
No. And, and, and with your interviews and stuff, so you're such a complete package. And I, yeah, I was really, uh, really, really impressed. Although I still was rooting for Mama, but that's Rotterdam and I'm Rotterdam. So Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Mama's amazing. Mama's Mama amazing. Is, Mama is amazing. That fashion, uh, that, that last thing she did with the feathers which just blew me away. But how oh, I saw it. We were lining up uh, for, the, for the final runway. Uh -huh. And of course, everybody's like busy with, with their own costume. And then we, when you're ready and you see everybody, uh, every queen is done. Um, and I looked it over Mama Queen and I was like, Wow. Okay, this is big. <laughs> oh, she, well, like, and she's already tall as is. Yes, she was like <laughs> two meters something, and then <laughs> this, she looked. She reminded me of a Maleficent, you know. And Maleficent, you have yeah, like yeah. This, oh, th those Maleficents, but also like parrots, uh, like color, colorful uh, Maleficents, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she reminded me of that. It was so so um, impactful. I yeah. just want to understand as a performer, you have a perfectionism that is very, I think, unique and rare. And I want to understand where that comes from. You don't make many mistakes. And I, I just want to understand, like, how do you achieve your vision so accurately? What do you do? Do you have a spiritual practice? I mean, you just seem very in touch with your creativity. Most artists make a lot of mistakes. Most well, I make a lot of mistakes. Well, I've made a lot of mistakes, but well, uh, what mistakes did you make on Drag Race? Because I didn't. Well, on on, on Drag Race, you know, yeah. being um, maybe you didn't see that, but I was a lot of times I was like doubting myself, being insecure, uh -huh. second guessing everything. Like my mind is going. Isn't that part like, of being an artist too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, you know, because I want to. I think perfection is boring. If you already have like in yourself, like. Oh yeah, I'm perfect. I don't need to change nothing. Then what's the use of being an artist? You know, you, every time you wanna, you wanna evolve and get better and make mistakes so you can grow grow from them. And um, I, I still make them to this day. Do you consider yourself a perfectionist? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> you, from what I understand, I was reading on one of the wikis, and they said that you are like, depending on how you look at it, you're sort of there's a, a fan system that was created. I forget what they call it. And you're, you and Bianca are like the top and you can argue which one of you are the top, but over all the drag race seasons, you're basically either number one or number two in terms of overall scoring, considering how safe, you know, how many times you were safe and how many times you were number one, which was four. Uh, what, what do you attribute that to? How did you do so much better than, you know, well over 150 Queens? I mean, I don't know. I just found out. <laughs> I, I I was like in the competition. You're really not thinking about that, mm -hmm. you know. You're just trying to uh, trying to make it to the next episode because, you know, uh, every episode you get you, you get judged like it's the first time they see you. Mm -hmm. So a track record we saw, we saw that is uh, non-existent because we you mm -hmm. know we saw some queens leave the competition who've been doing so amazing. And right. I really thought, oh, that's going to be top four. And they make one mistake and they were gone, you know, and that makes you really like on your edge and focused. And um, because one mistake and you can be gone. Like Saturday. Yeah. yeah for example, I think everybody, yeah. everybody thought she would be top three, including me. Yeah it's, yeah. it's it's really interesting because like you'd looked genuine. I think it was the third time you won. I can't remember which one it was. You looked genuinely shocked that you won. <laughs> I was, I was, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I'm also not blind. I know yeah. it's uh, what's going on and I can, I, I know when I did great or yeah, fucked up mm. a little bit. Um, but I, I was, I was, I was yeah. very, uh, I, I didn't like the wins. I didn't saw coming. And after like the, the fourth win, I was like, okay, come on. You know, I, I would be, I, I would be totally okay if they give one of the wins Mm -hmm. uh, to the other queens, but yeah. So what? Eventually. What was your favorite win? My huh? mom. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. my mom. Uh, the the episode with my mom. That was absolutely my favorite win. And how and, did you uh, come up with that costume? Um, well, you know the the flag of Cusco mm -hmm. is a rainbow, and um, oh. and not a lot of people know that because they thought, oh, it's like a pride parade. And no, <laughs> the actual flag of Cusco is a rainbow. And uh, because I've been to Cusco uh, in February, I, I got inspired by just walking there and just to see how their the hair of the of, of the local people look like. They have all like braids, uh, so that's how I came with the braid, but then differently. 
and uh, of course i wanted to come on a on a yama because the story is like yeah. me and my mom came on our yamas to holland and we just arrived in holland and we are seeing oh look at that oh look at that how beautiful <laughs> that is so we just arrived from peru on our llamas that was basically the story for the runway that makes sense i'd love to see okay so i have an idea when you, if we ever are allowed to travel again i'd love to see mm -hmm. you with your crown and scepter a machu picchu like and you know like the queen of the Incas return. Wow. It'd be so Can cool. you imagine? <laughs> I can. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. So a little gossip because we had uh, 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 Patty on here and also uh, last week we had Miss Abby and um, they, they were saying that you might, they thought maybe you got a little bit of coaching from the production that helped you win. Is there any truth to that or were you just, or is that just jealousy? Do you think? They said that? Yeah. No, no. Well, they think that no. you might have had a little, yeah, a little like, because, for example, the way you did Born This Way, yeah, uh, so so well that you that you knew when to play to the camera, you knew when to make the face. The fact that you you were so well uh, poised in your in your um, production that they thought that you know perhaps you had received some sort of help, some coaching from production, and perhaps that you knew some people in advance behind the scenes or something. No. Not well, true. yeah, you know, Holland is very small. Yeah, you know, um, so of course, um, uh, I've I've known uh, Clays Everson. Uh huh. You know, um, because we were um, with Gay Pride, me and Abby and Ivy uh, from yeah. the Mermaids, we got booked like three, three years in a row on the mm -hmm. on the Pride parade that uh, Clays Everson designed the boat. He did uh, the designing, mm -hmm. designing of it. So of course I've know him from um, Gay Pride, and same with Nikki, for example. We've met each other on the Kennel Parade on the floats, and that's how yeah. later on we uh, collaborated. But um, I didn't know that Clays was one of the judges. <laughs> I and just I, 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 yeah I found <laughs> out Nikki, yeah. yeah and Nikki I found out when we were filming, so um, no no I think that's very unfair as well because it, a little story as well because I uh -huh. I've lied you know uh, when they were speculating about um, who who was going to be on the show right. which queen's going to be on the show you know I lied that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be on the show because I'm gonna oh. do the makeup of uh, a Fred. Oh, and a lot of queens um, believe that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they never. Did you do the, did you do uh, the makeup for Fred? No, no, no. There was no, another no. queen. No, uh, but <laughs> I've I, seen I, that on uh, on his on his uh, Insta. Who, who did? I, yeah, I, oh. I've, I've painted him one time. That uh -huh. was uh, a half a year before for a parody show of the um, of of Drag Race on the TV yeah. Cantina. Oh, uh, so mm -hmm. that's why they they assumed that I was doing the makeup. Did you know Fred uh, before the show? Everybody knows Fred before the show. Okay. Every queen knew uh, Fred before the show. And um, and uh, let me think. Oh, yeah. And then one evening, uh, we were out, and I was with Janie, and with uh, so Jean as well were there. And we were talking about the show, and Janie was like, girl, I'm so excited. You know, I'm going to bring amazing looks. And I was like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. It's, at, one, at one point, she wanted to show me one of the looks. And uh -huh. I said, no. Oh, girl, no, surprise me. Surprise me uh, whenever uh, we see each other there on, uh, <laughs> on, the, uh, on, on set. Then right. I just want to be surprised, you know? And I was like, oh, shit, shit, shit. No, don't show me, you know? I don't want to <laughs> see it because that's cheating, you know? Right. And I, wanna, I don't want to win or do well um, with cheating because at the end, they're going to know <laughs> and yeah. I'm going to be called out for that. When, speaking of that, um, you know, one... one uh, episode that was particularly uh, interesting uh, was the the split personality uh, yeah. outfits. I'm curious what your opinion is on that because you dressed more in the traditional male female, and then others there was controversy because Mama Queen and Chelsea Boy interpreted it as a very non-binary, gender fluid kind of way. What what are your thoughts on on that interpretation? Do you do you feel yeah. like it was meant to be uh, male female strictly, or are you okay well, with the way they did it? Well, um, of course, I didn't know that Mama Queen and Chelsea Boer were going to be on it. So I didn't know that uh -huh. there was a possibility to interpret it differently. Uh -huh. The memo, the meal, the meal that we got was very confusing as well. And I look back at it because the title was Split Personalities. But um, it said the description was half man, half woman. You want to see a half a man, a male side and a female side. So I thought, OK, well, that's boring. You know, um, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. And it's I didn't like that um, mm -hmm. that runway, to be honest. 
because I thought, okay, there's not so much you can do, you know? Um, right. And, yeah. Well, and, and it all seemed throughout the whole show, because we've talked to many of the contestants now and mm -hmm. through the whole show that there seems to be a lot of confusion about uh, what guys, uh, what you guys got as a... Uh, um, uh, as a memo? Yeah. Yeah. As a memo. Yeah. Uh, and what was actually said on the show, because uh, in particular, this uh, this uh, uh, this one was, uh, I think Fred said uh, split personality, but then the, the intro with Mama Ru was... Uh, half man, half queen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. that's so, why it was confusing for all of us, you know, um, because when we were lining up and I saw uh, the concept of, of Mama Queen and Chelsea, well, I was like, oh, shit. If I knew that, I would have done something similar, you know, because it's more exciting. So I really love their concept and I, I got it right, right away. You know, uh, I understand their concept and I thought it was very cool. It's, yeah. It's, do, you, do you have a favorite queen besides you? <laughs> uh, from the show yeah you I mean, better say miss abby oh my god because you're gonna get a lot of trouble if you don't do it <laughs> oh, yeah next question <laughs> yeah so speaking of no that's good i i, I that's fair so yeah. you had a little spat with abby on screen it was good television we we love both of you but i want to know are you guys cool together now are you good yeah of course okay. no we are cool together no you have a house yeah we are we uh we work together we are in the mermaids mm -hmm. mansion we're in a drag house yeah. And of course, um, you don't want to compete against somebody that you know and have worked with and who, who is very close to you. But it's a competition. And from the moment we signed the contract, we knew that we are going to be in a competition. Uh, and it, it's the same with the other queens, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Janie and Sadashin knew each other. They work right. with each other. And Mika knows. So they're good friends as well, like me and Abby yeah. uh, were. And um, a lot of the other queens... You know, Mama Queen and Abby were very good friends as well. We all are friends of each other at the end of the... But it got so, like, blown up because we are in the same house. Right. And that the focus was so on us. And so, from, well, why it's only on us, you know? <laughs> because we're all friends. But that just... So, just you know, I think it was what I of, also yeah. think that is a problem. I don't think Dutch people in general are really, really dramatic and... Uh, they don't wear their uh, emotions on their sleeve. Mm -hmm. And uh, with definitely with Abby, she definitely has that Brazilian spice and their oh, yeah. emotional Ooh. part. So that was, uh, for production value, very yeah. interesting. So yeah. I think it was milked a lot. Because, yeah, yeah the other queens, not, not that they're, they're not fantastic to uh, view and talk about, yeah. but... Uh, from a, a, a production uh, perspective, we saw we saw we saw the drama. first episode. The first episode. Oh, there's a storyline. Abby oh. and Envy. <laughs> they have a storyline. So, how, um, much, how much does production try to uh, do stuff? Like, I know well, I have a I have a friend who was on Big Brother, and they manipulate the hell out of the show. They tell people you should do this, you should do that. Do they do that in in Drag Race, or do they just no? It, 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 no, it. It, it happened very organically. Uh -huh. Everything that you, you see on the show, it really happened. Uh -huh. And there, it's not being set up. Okay, you're going you're gonna to go fight with Envy or something like that. Okay. Uh, or um, no, everything really happened at the moment. And uh, of course, with the sound effects and everything, it gets more dramatic. <laughs> yeah, but this, yeah. <laughs> but uh, everything... So like like when you're at the table and you're all chatting together at the beginning and somebody will say, so how was it for you? Did you have any homophobia growing up? And they'll ask those personal questions, which make excellent TV. Those aren't planned. That's just organic conversation. Oh, when, when we're getting ready. Yeah. Those so well, no, no, yeah, of course uh, they asked the production ask, um, we want to, we want to film, uh, for example, me with mama queen. Yeah. And can you talk about like how you're coming out to us? And that's, okay. you know, um, because most of the time, if you are getting ready, we just want to get ready. You know, right. you just focus on yourself and on your makeup. So yeah. um, that's why they, they hand you little, a little uh, uh, subjects. And so can you please talk about this while mm -hmm. you're getting ready? So you don't need, need to think about keeping a conversation going, but just to talk about your own experience um, I see. With, uh, with that queen. Yeah. I see. And you, you identify as a, a gay male. Is that, is that right? I'm just yes. guessing. Okay. Yes. And yeah. you have a you have a boyfriend for several years, right? 
fiance, yes. boyfriend, husband? No, no, boyfriend. What's going on there? Boyfriend. Very boyfriend. Nice. No, it's my boyfriend. He, um, he's from the UK. Uh-huh. His name is Andy. And uh, we've been with each other for almost like three years now. Um, but we know each other for way longer. He really saw me from the beginning when I was doing drag. He, he came mm-hmm. to my shows. And um, um, and then one and one yeah one moment he uh, we've met when I was out of drag in a bar, the same yeah. bar, Taboo yeah. Bar. And then we had like a little thing. We had like a, this attraction. So I really like him, but I'm so focused on my job and on my work. So yeah. a boyfriend was not like, I don't, I didn't have time for that. Yeah. So I really um, kept him aside for, I think a year. Yeah. And then after a year, he said, we should drink together. We should do something together. We always have fun when you see each other. And so why, why don't we go on a, on a, on a drink? And said, so, okay, well, fine. <laughs> so, um, so we went on our first date. And from that moment on, we, um, yeah, we, th- yeah, we fell in love. And you two live Aww. together? No, we don't live together. Oh, you don't? No. no. But is he still in England? or? No, no, he's an expat. He lives here in Amsterdam. Okay, so you still get yeah. to see each other. You're not separated yeah, yeah. by the COVID. No, right? no, no, no. That's no, we good. still see each other. Yeah. Very nice. And um, how do you decide, like, uh, how do you pick out your outfits? I mean, your, your, your fashion sense is exquisite. How do you go about implementing it? Do you get a vision and you draw it? or And then you find a designer? How, do, how does that work for you? I process? always... Um, get inspirations on the internet. I watch a lot of fashion shows. Um, I love sci-fi movies. Um, and I always, when I get an idea, I just try to draw it out. Mm-hmm. And most of the time, I don't even know what I'm going to draw, but I just let my hand do the thing, the, the magic. Mm-hmm. And then I look at it and say, mm, yeah, this is cute, but I'm going to try it again. And I just, it's like a process of maybe like, 14 drawings and then okay that is the direction that i want to go and then i go to think of color patterns or hair and jewels so i love that 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 um that creative process always very nice yeah well it certainly it certainly works you know i i I wanted to ask you i forgot because we were talking about the mermaid's mansion i'm trying to understand what is it what what that i'm not obviously from holland and Mm -hmm. what is a drag house what does that mean is that a physical house or is it just like a group of people who are friends that perform together what what is well originally uh, a house comes from the ballroom scene Mm -hmm. and that's uh, a group of artists who live together have support with each other because back in the 90s um a lot of people got like uh, abandoned from their uh from their um parents Mm -hmm. so they didn't have nowhere to go so that's how houses created. It's like um, LGBTQ uh, houses of people, and in the ballroom scene, they then they competed together uh, for titles. And right. nowadays, now with the Mermaid's Mansion, we don't live in a house together, uh, but we wanted to compete on the Super Bowl. And the Super Bowl is in Paradiso in Amsterdam, and yeah. that's an annual uh, drag competition where uh, ten or eleven drag houses compete of being the, the um, yeah, the, the best drag house of Europe because it's like a very European drag competition mm-hmm. in parody. So it's very big. And uh, we wanted to compete on um, on the Super Bowl. And that was in 2017. And we won. We won every single title that we could win that oh. evening. So that's how we manifest our name in Amsterdam. So you were doing yeah, that when you, you, oh, you had sorry. just started. Go ahead. Because you yeah. said you started in 2016. So you're one year into drag and you're already winning the Super Bowl. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. And you did an amazing collaboration with uh, Rijksmuseum. It yes. It must have been yes. wonderful to, uh, well, I, oh. I love Musea. Yeah. So that when I saw that clip, I was like, oh, that what must that? have been so amazing. Yeah, it was really, really cool. Uh, a year after we won a Super Bowl, we, um, because we had a, a whole, the whole year as a reigning, uh, yeah, um, drag house of Holland. So we wanted to do a tribute um, to just show you like we are still those bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so we came up with an idea to uh, have a little bit more attention towards the discrimination and violence against our community, especially the trans community. So we contact the right museum and to pitch an idea that we would love to do a video clip in the museum uh, to uh, because the, the theme of pride was remember the past create the future so uh, we were the future and the museum stands for the past mm-hmm. so uh, it was a very nice visual piece that you see like us the new generation in the old like the old shrining of, of the museum it was very cool wow. and uh, 
It went far. And it also it makes huge. Uh, yeah. uh, drag as an art form yeah. uh, come full circle within the Rijksmuseum, I think. Yeah. I thought yeah, it was we were brilliant to do it there. Yeah. Yeah, we were the first queens ever to um, get the chance to film in an empty Rijksmuseum. And uh, the moment we pitched at their office, we, we went there in full drag uh, to pitch our idea. And the whole office were like in awe, like, oh my gosh, it's drag queens. Normally it's like nothing going on here. Now there's three drag queens come in. And, um, but, and they loved our idea right away. Yeah. They said, okay, when do you want to film it? <laughs> Amazing. We, we, we got a yes right away. So, um, yeah, me, Abby, and Ivy were so beyond excited. And our friend Sergio as well, uh, which is one of our, our best friends, he came with the idea. And um, so it was very, very cool to, uh, to realize that. Yeah. That's fantastic. I'm going to look that up as soon as, as soon as we finish. I have to see that. Yeah. Love um, is love. Same. Love is love. Yeah, like mermaids. Mentioned. I'll send you the link. Oh, please, yes. So, <laughs> I, I was curious too about something you said, and uh, if you have to go, just let us know. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but you you mentioned in another interview that you saw the Dutch scene is unique because you're all very uh, sort of inclusive, and that you have bio queens and I think drag drag kings too in your scene or no? Yeah, it's uh, a fab queens. Uh, bio queens has been considered a little bit offensive. Um, oh, it's okay. a fab queens, which uh, means uh, assigned female at birth uh, oh. queens. And um, yeah, we got the bearded queens, of course. We got club kids. We got aliens. We got mm -hmm. um, we got. It's so diverse. Our scene in Amsterdam, and it's so beautiful. If you go out and you go to Club Nix, for example, mm -hmm. you see the beauty queens. You see the bearded queens. You see everything. It's wonderful. Love to see more of that in Chicago. I'm a big fan of that, especially the, I guess you call it AFAB queens. I'm an old woman. I didn't know the new terminology, but you know, that, <laughs> it's just, it needs to be more diverse. And I think I'd yeah. love to see that reflected on uh, drag race. I'm still waiting for the first, I guess, AFAB queen and, um, and drag king, certainly uh, in Chicago on drag race. Well, it's beer. Oh drag race. yeah. Yeah. Oh. That would be amazing as well because uh, and for our season, they rumored uh, some AFAB queens to be in the cast. Ah. But uh, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, um, it was not the right time. But hopefully, if there comes a, sec a second season of Drag Race Holland, it would be very cool to have uh, some representation for AFAB queens. And are there a lot of um, that black opened doors for me as well? Mm -hmm. Yes, because I know. Oh, yeah, you can I do know it. <laughs> when when because when I was younger and the uh, uh, travesty show so a little uh it was in 95 i was so in awe of the drag queens because i loved their exuberant uh clothes and their beautiful makeup their wonderful wigs and i was like oh i want to yeah. do that but you yeah. are a drag queen fashion you really are you really are Usually yeah. I might, not now, definitely mm. not now, but usually <laughs> I'm a little more, <laughs> but yeah, I, I didn't really, I wasn't really aware that that actually was a thing. Yeah. You know, that, that, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And even and we've had drag, drag kings queens. as well. And what about lesbian drag queens such as myself? We're, we're allowed to everyone, right? A drag is for everyone. <laughs> I agree. It's for everybody. I, I think what you guys did on this season was fantastic. Uh, you broke so many barriers, not only because the quality of your work and the diversity of, yeah, that's of the really performers. Well praised, yeah. But I, I was so touched when you had your mother on there and Mama Queen mm -hmm. had their, her father because that really opens things up. That, that helps people. You yeah, know, that shows people that it's your parents can be accepting. It teaches. I, yeah. I, th I think that that's why I love Drag Race so much. Also, yeah. the non-binary uh, discussion that was uh, started. Right. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. What, do you think there'll be a uh, All Stars International? Well, I've I've been seeing some rumors on the internet that they um, that they're I don't know if it's true, but. Um, <laughs> They, they want to have like an all-stars for, for example, for the UK, Australia, yeah. Holland, um, Canada. So who knows? It would be very cool to see uh, some of the queens back. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> there goes my laptop. <laughs> we still got you. Because it would yeah. be cool to see like, um, you know, like the equivalent of Miss Universe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Miss Universe, where it's all the different countries. So if there's enough RuPaul drag races, you can just have, a, you know, the one from Chile, the one from Thailand, the one from yeah. America. Yeah. And then the one from Holland, all all be together plus you know some extras. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be amazing. 
Well, this is great. I, we're so happy that you were able to to come on the show. What what's the future for Envy Peru? I mean, after your your big world tour, what, where do you see yourself going artistically? You planning to go back to acting? As, as a profession or you want to stay with Dre, you want to do everything? Well, of course, I, I would love to do, um, I want to, first of all, I want to, this year, I want to tour with the girls. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been some plans for next year, but it really all depends on what the pandemic is going to do and what COVID is going to do. Yeah. But uh, of course, first of all, touring and just uh, see the world and um, yeah, get to experience like the whole, uh, yeah, the, the whole experience, basically. Yeah. And uh, I would love to do more on television. I would love to present more things or do more acting in drag, but also as Boris. Um, yeah. I just want to be um, a package that you can, you know, uh, uh, like a presenter, but I can also do drag or uh, everything. Yeah, I would love to do more uh, on television. Like Fred, and, uh, you can do a Fred. <laughs> yes, I really see Fred as my one of my biggest examples. I really yes. admire a lot what he has done uh, yes. career wise. Um, it's so it's we love really fred fun. we are yeah. fred fans yeah and i feel like are. there were two winners of the show you and fred because he was just so <laughs> great and i don't he even know what the hell he's so saying good. no but he <laughs> he really made it his own he's, yeah he was funny you know um yeah. it, it was not a copy he really no. had his own yes. fred flair uh on his hosting so uh well done fred i, I yes. say i i even say i'm not even dutch i say people finoke neat and i'll say yeah. <laughs> still i just love, that's the funniest part of the whole show when he screams at them while they're cute it, it's oh my god it reminds me of batman when batman would go in through or the one villain would go into a room where all these got people are talking and then they just turn them into sand and they don't even notice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness well good luck to you and if you're ever in chicago oh my god i forgot to ask you the most important question what's your favorite yeah. peruvian dish what's oh, your favorite peruvian food i think i must say papa de la moncaina mm -hmm. uh, or ceviche mm. Mm. i love ceviche i think ceviche okay Pero, um lomo saltado ají mm -hmm. de gallina mm -hmm. oh you you must be so lucky with a with a girlfriend yes. who cooks you Peruvian. Oh my God, I miss yes. mom sometimes. <laughs> uh, Papa Luancaina is my favorite too. Yeah. If you ever if you ever come to Chicago, we will. I promise you a home cooked meal. Oh uh, with my all God! All of those things you mentioned. Yes. Everything. <laughs> okay, you got it. Oh, Thank what's the name so of your much. girlfriend? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. uh, I don't. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, center. Well, There's her a translation. Love. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good question, though. I haven't figured out her uh, lesbian name yet, but she oh, okay. It's a little complicated. <laughs> a little yeah. breaking that fourth wall a little bit. It's kind of okay. <laughs> well, Santa, Santa, muchos saludos. I will. Yeah, muchos saludos. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Uh, we really appreciate this, and yeah, it's so gracious so of you to take the time. Yeah. I, uh, all of you. All of you have been so great. And yeah, the whole wonderful. cast uh, have been wonderful to indulge us with their presence. Uh, and yeah. uh, you are definitely one of the, well, my favorites and definitely Richard, uh, uh, Maggie's favorite. <laughs> Jesus. My fourth now wall I'm is crumbling. Yeah, I'm, I'm fucking up too. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for the amazing uh, that you took the time to review the show throughout the whole season. We love um, it. Yeah, really humbly uh, thank you for that. Well, that was all Danielle's. I mean, oh, shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fashion Slurry's idea. Oh, God. It was her, all her because she said, let's do a. We should. She said, I heard. I was just a few months ago. She said, I heard there's going to be a drag race, uh, Holland. Uh, we should do it. I'm like, okay. And then I thought, oh, well, it'll be a year, you know, because usually these things take for two months. She's like, here's the promo. It's starting like next week. I'm like, okay, we'll do it. But I thought I was going to be able to come back, come to Holland for the finale. You know, we could yeah. all hang out. Yeah, but same. It was just so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we didn't have like a big finale. Yeah, someday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Someday. Someday, yeah. Well, guys, it was very nice talking you. to you. You have a great Thank uh, you for your time. time. And uh, yeah. I hope you had wonderful interviews with the. Uh, uh, Peruvian press that's yes, probably have, lined uh, up right now. Yeah, yeah, in five minutes I have uh, the Peruvians. Okay. Yes, I need to switch to uh, to Spanish. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But see you later. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you. much, guys, Bye. and talk soon. Das Bye. Das Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.